is Good Stackers University? Let's continue this conversation about ratios and why they are so important, especially when trying to find undervalued assets. When you look at this chart of commodities to equity ratio, which direction do you think this ratio is headed? I mean, you don't have to be a member of Stackers University to figure that out. As we discussed in the previous video, which I will link to at the end, Ratios give you a number of key pieces of information as it relates to relative value or price, historical context, where the market currently is, and the likely direction eventually. I say eventually because ratios do not tell you when the shift will occur. For example, you could have been a big purchaser of Barron's Gold Mining Index in 2009, thinking that these metals can't get any cheaper compared to the price of gold. But as you can see, they did, and they went from a ratio of around 20 all the way down to 8 and still hasn't recovered from those 2009 ratio levels. If you would have started buying in 2009, I would have to imagine the last 15 years would have been like a personal hell. This is exactly why you don't just look at a ratio and start throwing money at. You have to use the ratio in conjunction with market conditions at a minimum. Otherwise, it'd be like playing roulette and only placing your bet on black. Always bet on black. I just had to say that. Regardless, you could be right on the first try or you could be right on your 10th try, which could be a very costly and painful experience in the meantime. As I thought about putting this video together, it was clear that there were two additional parts of ratios that we needed to discuss. And frankly, the first one will excite you and the second part might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. So let's see if you stay with me through this entire video. Let's start with the fun stuff. Now that you have a good understanding of how ratios can help you find arbitrage opportunities in the marketplace, let's dig a little deeper into using ratios and swapping metals as a powerful way to grow your wealth in terms of ounces. Let's go back to the age old example of the gold to silver ratio and see how swapping metals could grow your ounces with very little additional money. Here we have the gold to silver ratio and let's hop on good old Doc Brown's DeLorean time machine and stop over in 1980 when the gold to silver ratio was around 18 to one. And let's say you happen to have 180 ounces of silver that you could trade for 10 ounces of gold. Now I'll jump back into that sweet ride fast forward to 1991 when the gold to silver ratio was 95 to 1. And let's say you traded your 10 ounces of gold for silver. For every ounce of gold, you would get 95 ounces of silver for a total of 950 ounces. Again, you don't have to be a member of Stackers University to see that your ounces grew substantially. As a matter of fact, why aren't you a subscriber to Stackers University anyway? Go ahead and hit that like button so you don't miss out on content like this, content that's level-headed, thoughtful, and about helping you grow as a person and investor, and of course, making a little more money. Hit that button and join the best institution of higher learning on YouTube. <laughs> At any rate, where was I? Oh yeah, I was just showing you how you had five extra silver holdings by simply swapping back and forth. Now, of course, you will have to spend some money to cover the cost of the premiums, but that aside, you literally grew your wealth with almost no risk. This is why I always tell you that it's crazy to simply say, I'm never going to sell my gold or silver. It makes no sense to sit around and let your metals take that roller coaster ride up and down and not benefit from it. If you don't want to sell high, you at least owe it to yourself to swap your metals at the highs and the lows because it's the easiest way to grow your stack. Before someone starts typing in the comments, Dr. Stacker, you cherry picked the data. So of course the numbers sound great. Fine. If we know 60 to one is the average GSR, Simply trade back and forth when the ratio hits 40 or below or 80 or above. It doesn't matter to me much. It won't be as dramatic, but you'll still be expanding your wealth in terms of ounces without doing much of anything. This, my friends, is just one example of how powerful ratios can be when you know how to use them. We just talked about the GSR, but there's no reason why we couldn't do the same thing with the gold to platinum ratio, which is historically around 1.5 to 1, meaning 1 1.5 ounces of gold would get you historically in an ounce of platinum. And we've seen that number go as high as 2.3, where 2.3 ounces of gold is equal to one ounce of platinum. But now it's at 0 0.08 of gold equals one ounce of platinum. So where do you think this ratio is likely to go? Tell me why you shouldn't at least have a few ounces of platinum. You don't wanna dabble in platinum? Okay, how about using the gold to S&P 500 ratio to swap between gold and shares of the S&P 500. I don't know if I would necessarily do this at the moment, but that's not my business, but you can do that using these ratios. What I want you to see is the power of ratios and how sw simply swapping metals can dramatically increase your wealth. Okay, I promised you that you were gonna like the first part, but the second part may not feel as good for some of y'all. Regardless, we need to talk about some other critical ratios, especially because these ratios are all about your wealth and your quality of life. Starting this channel has really taught me a lot and opened my eyes in some really incredible ways. And I used to believe that because we were all stackers and followers of sound money, that this meant all of us understood money and practiced good money habits. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth, which is why, in addition to talking about stacking, I am now talking more about money and money management and financial wellness 
more and more. The need to discuss this topic came clear to me over the last six months or so, as I've seen her so many stackers having to liquidate their stack because they didn't quite have their financials lined up the right way, or people stacking and carrying large amounts of debt and little reserves. You've heard me say that every dollar is an employee and their job is to get you more employees. What I also need to point out is that means you are the CEO of what we're going to call the business of me, not me, me, but me, you, you know what I mean? As the CEO of the business of me, you have to accept responsibility for all aspects of your company, meaning your life. And today we're going to start with some key ratios to give you a sense of how well you're doing. If you don't know these numbers off the top of your head, that's your homework for this week. The rich and wealthy know the true importance of these numbers and monitor them as a way to help make sure that they are maintaining and growing their wealth. While we tend to focus on answering questions like how much should I be stacking? What percentage of gold or silver should I have? What percentage of my net worth should be in metals? We need to make sure that we have the basics down as these five ratios serve as your financial foundation. While I'm going to give you some suggested numbers for each of these ratios, Treat these as a rule of thumb that may need to be adjusted for your particular situation. Some of these ratios need explaining and others don't. So let's just jump straight in. First, savings slash investing rate. First and most importantly, we got to start by talking about you have to pay yourself first. And you measure that by looking at your savings to investing ratio. For this one, I have a conservative and an aggressive calculation. The aggressive calculation is you are saving and or investing 20% of your gross monthly income. The conservative calculation is 10% of your net monthly income. Second, six months emergency fund. On the surface, this sounds a lot like your savings and investing, but this isn't the same. This is six times of your monthly expenses. That is money that sits somewhere not invested, but is 100% liquid just in case the fit hits the shan, if you know what I mean. Your savings is something that you may or may not tap into, but your emergency fund is sacred. Third, housing ratio. What percentage of your gross income goes towards your housing? While banks will allow you to go as high as 45 to 80, 48% on your mortgage, I'm going to suggest you want that number to be close to the 30 and maybe 40% in the more expensive parts of the country. Number four, DTI or your debt to income ratio. You want this number obviously to be as low as possible, but typically that number is around 35% or less. Remember, the game of capitalism is about who owes who. And in general, the more you owe other people, the poorer you will be. Five, credit usage. Then this number alone makes up 30% of your overall credit score. And ironically, that's the max percentage credit agencies recommend, and they want you to be below that number. So remember, this is calculated by taking the total amount you owe divided by your total credit limit. So if you had $1,000 owed and you have $10,000 in total credit, that means your credit usage is 10%. Pretty straightforward. And as a bonus, let's talk about your 50, 30, 20 budget. You know you're doing well when 50% or less of your budget goes towards expenses, 30% is for your discretionary spending or what I like to call guilt-free spending, and 20% goes towards your savings and investments. Here's the good news. You and only knew, you know the answer to these questions. What's even better is you have the ability to improve these ratios. You don't need to do it tomorrow and you don't need to do it all at one time, but it's something that you should be working towards. Before you worry about the government confiscating your medals, I want you to focus on how you may be hijacking your future by not taking care of today's problems. I may not like or agree with what Dave Ramsey has to say about gold and silver, but he is correct on this point. Quote, winning with money is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. What to do isn't the problem, doing it is, end quote. Finally, if you need help with, with the doing part or even the knowledge part, I want to encourage you to take advantage of the free 30-minute coaching calls I'm offering this month. We may not be able to fix everything during the 30 minutes, but you definitely will be closer to your goals after our call. Also, be on the lookout for my first two online courses on money mindset and mindful budgeting, which should launch in the next four weeks. Ultimately, I don't care how you get to financial wellness, I just want to see you there. The more of us living financially well lives is actually how we beat this corrupt and rotten economic and financial system. I know you can do it because I did it. I was broke. At one point, I had more than $1 million in debt. I lived through sleepless nights, bounced checks, having to pawn my Rolex and jewelry, you name it, and I was able to turn it around. I turned it around by being disciplined and learning how to live on less, and when I turned it around, that's how I saved my first hundred, more than $100,000 in less than three years, and I mean saved, 
Not invested and it grew to that, but I saved it. I learned and lived the, this model of be, do, have. That I had to be a different person on the inside, how I thought, how I felt, how I believed about money in order to do what was needed to be done in order to have the life that I wanted to have. And you can do the same. Click on the link if you need help or you want to learn more. It's free and it's about me giving back to the community and nothing else is just good old fashioned karma. In the comment section, what do you think about ratio swapping? Which of the financial wellness ratios do you need to work on? Or simply put an A plus in the comments so that everyone knows that you always stack smarter and never stop learning.